This is read local files with Python and Olama. First of all, what do we need? We need to install Python. On Windows, we can just go winget install Python. Let that run. And then just to check that it's working, we can go ahead and check version. Next, we will need to get Olama. So we can see here, we've got the latest version as of recording 0.147. So we can just go ahead and say install. And in this case, two different sources over the Microsoft store or via winget, uh, we can just go ahead and copy that ID and just go winget install and then paste in that ID there. Great, I've already got mine. Otherwise, just let it do its thing. And just to check that we have it installed, we can just go dash V and check our version. If Olama doesn't work, out of the box, you will need to put it into your environment variables. One easy option is to use the environment variables program inside Power Toys, and you'll just need to add in the file path to where Alama was installed on your system. Quick disclaimer, I suck at programming. Stick around to see all the code in this project and for a frequently asked questions at the end of the video. All right, so let's search up Olama and we'll go to the main website. So this is essentially like the host of all of our models. And next let's look up Olama Python. And here we can see a link to the GitHub repo, which is a Python library dedicated for the Olama API. Great, so these are the main resources that we're gonna refer back to and we need. The only other thing that we need to decide on is essentially what model we wanna use. So back on the web page, we can go over to the models section and here are the lists of the models that Olama natively support. Now it's really up to you and your local hardware and preference which models that you wanna use. Some are better for certain things than others. Some are easier to run and more lightweight than others. For the purposes of this video, we're going to be using the Q when two, when two, uh, mainly just because it's super small and lightweight. So on the model page, we can select this little dropdown and here are the different like versions or parameters. So if we select the smallest being only 352 megabytes and we can see here our command has updated. So we've got our model and then we've got the version. So we can copy that and use that. Otherwise we can just go ahead and type it in. So let's just quickly run Olama and see our options here. So we can run a model like we had in that command. Otherwise we can pull a model from the registry, which is what we're interested. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy our model that we want to download or pull. And now we can just go Olama pull and then paste in our version that we want. Great, so now we've got our model via Olama's repository or library. Let's just go ahead and open up our code editor. I'm just gonna go ahead and make an app.py, our Python file. And then just by hitting control escape, I think is the hotkey, we can get our terminal. So the last thing we need to install is pip install Olama, that we can go ahead and use that with Python. So one last file that we need to make is just some sort of notes data, um, something for our Python script to read. I'm just gonna say, this is a note. I like dolphins and I want to write one one day. So we can go ahead and close that. Now we want to write it. Python script. So let's start off with our import statement to get Olama. And flicking back over to the documentation, we can see here, we're just following this basic usage. So if you wanna do anything more, definitely head back here. So we made that notes.md file, which is right next to our app. So let's just go ahead and store this string inside a variable. So we'll just say note. Next, we want to open this in the read and we're just gonna say as file. And we're just gonna store the file's content into a variable called content and we'll do that with the read. Next, let's think about our prompt. So we can just have a variable called my prompt and we'll just set this as a string and this is what we're gonna feed into the model. Let's just state this is a personal note. What is it? So we wanna feed it that variable. So we can do that in a couple of ways. Let's just make this an F string and then we'll pass through content. Great, so the last thing to get our program or basic script up and running is we just need to call Olama. So Olama has like a chat if we wanted to have like an actual conversation with the model. But in this case, we want to use generate, which is kind of just better for one offs. So here we can specify the model. Since we currently only have one model, that's going to be the model that we're using. And then we need to specify what prompts that we want to send through. And in this case, we're going to use the variable. 
prompt we've set my prompt then let's just store this all in a variable in itself called response which is going to get the entire object and store it in there then lastly we want to actually extract out the entire response and we'll store this in the actual response so how we get into the actual response is we want to open it up like a dictionary and we want to pull out value and in this case it's called response inside this object and then lastly we can get out at the other end is we just want to print the actual response. So let's go ahead and run this through Python and let's see our response. And our model has loaded up and said, the note is about the person's interest in dolphins and writing them one day, the person's primary concern seems to be about dolphin safety and well-being. Okay, but that is a very quick script to read a file on your local system and query it against a model. Great, so let's just go over a couple of frequently asked questions. First up, can I use Olama in Python? Well, as you've seen in this tutorial, yes, absolutely. There's a dedicated Python library for Olama, which is super nice. So it's just as simple as using that if you want to use Python. Next up, what is Olama used for? Olama is essentially like hosting the models and allowing interaction with the models on your local system. So it's kind of what's enabling the use of AI locally. Is Olama completely local? Yes, you can totally switch off your internet connection, deplug from the mainframe, and you can have Olama running locally on your system without any callbacks to any remote system. So in that sense, it's totally secure and private. Next up, what is Olama good for? As we've seen, it's really good for integrating AI or LLMs into your local system and then using a scripting language like Python to then work it into your workflow in seemingly limitless ways. The fact that you're not relying on a remote system like ChatGPT or Google's Gemini, there's no privacy concerns. So it's really good if you're working with sensitive data or you just don't trust big companies. You can just automate a lot more and you can just keep it all local. Does Olama have a GUI or GUI? Yeah, so if you go over to Olama's GitHub page, there's a big list of web and desktop options uh, that the community have made. One popular one being Open Web UI. I haven't used it myself, but it looks like it gives a pretty nice interface that looks very open AI-ish. So if you're not totally comfortable with using the terminal, but definitely check over Olama's GitHub page for more options. So lastly, does Olama use GPU or graphics cards? Yeah, so it does. So if you go over to the docs on the GitHub page, there's a GPU page here and actually shows a full list of the graphics cards that Olama currently support. So for example, fairly recent um, GeForce from NVIDIA are all supported and there's also AMD there too. So I hope you enjoyed this little Python project. All the notes are gonna be down below in the description. So let me know what you're working on. Go ahead and check out my Python 2 Obsidian video.